Okay, so today we're going to take our equations another step further, and we're going to look at equations involving fractions. Now, on this first example, I actually want you to remember that we've actually solved simple equations with fractions already, okay? If you recall, when you look at an equation like this, we want to isolate, of course, the y term, and it's being multiplied by negative one quarter. So we can take this negative one quarter, and we're, of course, going to do the opposite. We're going to divide it to the other side. Um, you can actually do it in two steps as well, and you can think of it as negative one y over four. And I'm going to actually show it to you in two steps because I find most people like to look at it that way. So like I said, we actually have negative one y if you want. And I have a divided 4, so I'm going to get rid of that by multiplying it to the other side. Okay, and when I multiply that, I get negative 1y equals 52. And of course, then I want to get rid of the negative 1, and it's being multiplied, so I divide it to the other side. So I get 52 divided by negative 1, so y equals negative 52. Okay, so we have done simple equations looking like that already. Now we're going to make them a little bit more like in this example. Okay, so notice in this example that there is one fraction right there. Okay, so, but it is a little more complicated. We do have that bracket right there. So, as like the above example, when we're solving an equation with a fraction, we're just going to multiply each side of the equation by this denominator, this 3. So, in the blank here, we're just going to multiply each side by the denominator. Okay. Now, I want you to note in the first step, when I multiply this side by 3, that of course gets rid of the denominator, so I could write it like this. I could multiply it, and this 3 and this 3 cancel out. So essentially, I'm multiplying the denominator to the other side, so it's going to look like this. So I'm going to be left with my 1, my 2x plus 4, and on the right-hand side, I'm going to have my negative 2 times my 3. Okay, so I'm just going to simplify that really quickly. Obviously, 1 times any bracket is just the bracket. So I have 2x plus 4 okay, equals negative 6. And then I'm going to continue solving exactly how we've been solving before. We want all the x terms on the left-hand side. We want all the numbers on the right-hand side using opposite operations. So first, I'm going to get rid of the adding 4. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to subtract it on the right-hand side. Then I'm going to, of course, simplify. So negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10. And then I'm going to get rid of the 2. The 2 is being multiplied, so I'm going to take the 2 and I'm going to divide it to the other side. And I'm going to find out that x equals negative 5. Okay, and again, don't forget, we can be checking every single one of these answers using a left side, right side chart. Okay, so now let's try them a little more complicated. So the last thing we're going to do, we're going to do a couple of these, these are the more complicated ones, is we're going to solve equations involving more than one fraction. So it could have two fractions, three fractions. Note all the terms don't have to have fractions, they can be constants added as well, okay? And when we're solving equations with more than one fractions, we multiply each side, in other words, all the terms by not just the denominator, but now we're going to multiply them by the lowest common denominator, or the LCD. Denominator. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this first question and let's see if we can figure out what the lowest common denominator is in this place, in this case. So of course we have a 5, we have a 2, 2 doesn't go into 5, so worst case scenario, the lowest common denominator, we take them and we multiply them together. So it's 10. Okay, now bear with me how we're going to write it. We are going to multiply every single piece or every single term by 10. Okay, so pay attention to how I'm going to write it this first time. You're going to write it exactly as I do. Okay, so we're going to take 10. There's just two terms this time, one on each side. So we're going to take 10 and we're going to multiply it by the left-hand side. And then we're going to take 10, and we're going to multiply it by the right-hand side. Okay? And now we're going to do cancelling. So for some of you, you've seen cancelling before. Um, for some of you, this will be your first look at it. Okay? So take a look at what I have. I have here 10 divided by 5 gives me 2. And on the right-hand side, I have 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. 
Okay, so let's write down what we're left with. We have our 2, and then we have a bracket a plus 2. Notice the denominator is gone. We've gotten rid of the fraction. That will happen every time if you have chosen your lowest common denominator correctly, or even just a common denominator, you will get rid of the fractions. Okay, so basically that's me saying the first step is to actually get rid of the fractions. And here's what we're left with on the right-hand side. Okay, so step number one, get rid of fractions. And then the great thing about these equations is if you can do that first step, if you can get rid of the fractions, now the equations are just like they've been for the past few days. So if you can do these fraction ones, you really have all the skills to be able to do all the previous equations we've been doing. Okay, so next up we're going to get rid of our brackets just like we did last day. So here we're going to, when we distribute, we're going to have 2a plus 4 equals 5a minus 20. Okay, now we're going to move all the a's to the left-hand side and all the numbers to the right-hand side. So we're going to keep the 2a. The positive or adding 5a is on the right. It's going to come to the left. It's going to become subtract 5a. We're going to keep the negative 20, and the adding 4 is going to become a subtract 4 on the right-hand side. Okay, now we're going to simplify like terms on each side. Collect them. 2a minus 5a is negative 3a. Negative 20 minus 4 is negative 24. Okay, now we're going to do our division. Here we have a multiplication. So we're going to divide the negative 3 to the other side. And of course we end up with then A equals positive 8. Okay, let's try another one of these. Okay, here we go with this one. Okay, notice we actually have this term right here, we have the 1 quarter x, and then we have a 2 term. Okay, so looking at the denominators, we have a 3 and a 4, and of course the lowest common denominator for those two would be 12. Okay, so first step is to get rid of the fractions. We're going to take every single term and we're going to multiply it by 12. Okay, so watch carefully again how we're going to write that. Okay, so I'm going to put my 12. I'm going to actually use square brackets because I've already used round brackets to write my 1 third x plus 3. And then on the right-hand side, I'm going to take my 12, and first I'm going to multiply it just by a quarter x. And then I'm also going to multiply it by the 2 as well, right? Every single term or every single piece. Sorry, by the 2. Okay, now let's get ready to do some cancelling again. Pay attention. Make sure you understand this. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, 12 divided by 4 is 3. And here, we don't have anything to cancel, so we're going to end up just multiplying. So look what we have left over. We have 4 times 1, so we have a 4, x plus 3. Okay, here we have 3 times 1x, so we have 3x. And here, we have 12 times 2, which is 24. Okay, again, notice, now we have an equation with brackets, just like yesterday. All the fractions are gone, and we just solve as we did before. So let's first get rid of the brackets and expand. We have 4x plus 12 equals our 3x plus 24. Okay, we're going to put all the x terms on the left, all the number terms on the right. So we have 4x. We're going to subtract the 3x on the left. On the right, we have our 24, and we're going to subtract the 12. Lucky for us, 4x minus 3x just, 3x just gives us 1x, and then we have our 24 minus 12, which gives us 12. Okay, so we're going to practice this again tomorrow. The great thing about fraction equations is they do test whether you can do all the equations, if you can do them. Okay, so see you tomorrow.